one of the things that I learned this year is that if you really need to stretch your leadership, you should also stretch some skills. I endeavored to get my private pilot's license this year, and it was incredibly humbling. Going from being known in the industry and having a lot of people assume that you know a lot about airplanes, and then getting into an airplane and realizing that you don't even know how to taxi is humbling. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about humility is a leadership strength. This is something that that we notice about the people around us. We notice when someone is humble and kind and they're a generous leader and they're enjoyable to be around because they're not arrogant or haughty or look down their nose at you. But how do we cultivate that in ourselves? How do we become that kind of leader? But I guess the question before that is, why would we want to become that kind of leader? And I think we can answer that for ourselves by examining what kinds of leaders we like. Do we like the arrogant leader or do we like the leader who's humble, who's who's kind and who really listens to what we have to say because they feel like we have something to offer. For myself, I do want to be that kind of leader. So my journey through getting my pilot's license helped me to examine those characteristics and those traits in my life. And I believe that we can practice humility. And obviously we do that by listening to people. We do that by encouraging people to have their own opinion and let us know what that opinion is. Um, We listen to them. We also give great feedback to people, feedback that's, um, that's really thought provoking and really shows that we're listening to them. So my um, premise today is that Um, that we should regularly assess our leadership mindset. So do we have a mindset that we have more to learn? And in my case, with learning how to fly, I felt like I was drinking through a fire hose every single day. It was absolutely crazy. I got up every morning thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to learn so much today. And we can do the exact same thing in our leadership. We can learn something every single day. We can learn from outside sources. We can learn from inside our company. Uh, I learn something every time I'm around my little granddaughter because her outlook on life is different than mine. So we can learn or we can assess our mindset. We can also assess our communications. Is our communication style one that shows that we have a humble spirit about us? Is it one that shows that we think we know it all? Um, Do we talk down to people? Do we really think about what the objective is of our conversation before we say what it is we're going to say? And one of the ways that I learned this when I was flying is in that nerve wracking feeling when you're about to press the mic in your airplane to call ATC. And I learned how to fly in Northern California. And that's kind of a busy area for air traffic control. So I was getting on NorCal, which is, you know, San Francisco and San Jose and Sacramento and Oakland and and all these pretty big cities. And my instructor finally gave me a formula that I could go through. And he said, um, who are you calling? Who are you? Where are you? And why did you press the button? So I think it's really important for us to think about that in our leadership communications also, right? Who are we talking to? Who are we in this role? Where are we coming from or where are we? We're going to need to know where we're going to, obviously, to be able to communicate that. But why did we push the button? Did we push the button to achieve an objective? We're flying VFR. Did we 
Do we need them to know that we're flying VFR so that we can afford, uh, avoid traffic? If we're filing an IFR flight plan from the air, we need to have some information there also, but we need to have an objective in our communications. I think when we are in a tough leadership position, sometimes our knee-jerk reaction is to bark at somebody because they've done something that we didn't appreciate or we didn't really like how they performed that. But our, we should always think about why we want to have this communication with them. Is the um, desired outcome that they would behave in a different way, that they would perform in a different way? Is it something that we need to address that's exciting to talk to them about? What's our desired outcome? So first, we need to assess our mindset. Then we need to assess our communications. Then we should assess our actions. Do our actions line up with what we're trying to achieve in our leadership? If we're constantly yelling at people, then perhaps what we're, what we're communicating through our actions is that um, someone's inept or that we don't believe in them. So our actions really need to line up with what we're trying to achieve in our leadership. And finally, we need to assess our adjustments. Okay, I made an adjustment to my communications here. Is that something that I adjusted working? What worked about it and what didn't work about it? Do I need to make any additional adjustments? So I think all of these things are really important in being a humble leader. So I want to ask you this morning, um, what's your biggest frustration in leadership right now? And then really think about what makes it worse. So if you have a frustration in your leadership of yourself, in your leadership of your team, in your leadership of an initiative, what is that frustration? And then what makes it worse? And then is that something that makes it worse addressable by assessing our mindset, our communications, our actions, or our response to the adjustments that we've already tried to make? So that's kind of my leadership thought for the day this morning. I hope that it really challenges you. Um, I'd love for you to spend five minutes journaling about how you want your leadership style to be perceived by others, others in your family, others in your workplace, and then share your thoughts with someone close to you and invite them to help you grow in your leadership. Sometimes that blind spot that we can't see is just the slight adjustment that we need to make.